Hi. <laughs> Everyone have a good lunch? Yeah. Cool. All right. So we're going to talk about the Drupal 8 theme system, talk about uh, a lot of different stuff. So without any further ado, we'll tell you a bit about ourselves, and then we'll just jump right into it. So my name is Scott Reeves. I'm a developer at Digital Echidna. We are a 30-person Drupal shop in London, Canada, and we are a silver sponsor, I believe. Yep, I'm being told that's correct. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, I'm also a Drupal 8 theme system co-maintainer and a Drupal core mentor. The core mentoring program is actually how I got started helping with core because it's just something I, I always knew I wanted to help, but I never knew how, so... If anyone is like me, I encourage you to check that out. By the way, can everyone hear me okay and see the slides okay? Just give me a high sign. Okay, thank you. And uh, this is, uh, I, I put I like beans because uh, this is me and the bean in Chicago. And uh, it ties into the next picture, so <laughs> I'll let uh, Joel introduce himself. So everybody can hear me okay as, as well? Okay, um, so my name is Joel Patet, and I'm from Canada, and I, I've been a developer for about, uh, since about 2001-ish. Um, <laughs> I'm a front-end and back-end developer, so I, I, try to, I, I try to bridge both gaps. Um, like, I, I come from a design background, but I'm doing a lot of the back-end programming, it seems, and connecting the two. So I try to sit in the middle. Um, I'm also a co theme, uh, Drupal 8 theme system maintainer with Scott and a, a few others. And um, I obviously love pierogies. That's me hugging a giant pierogi in northern Saskatchewan. Or sorry, northern, <laughs> northern Alberta, sorry. And it's, yeah, it's a, a giant pierogi. There's a lot of giant things in Canada, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> in the prairies. Yeah, in the prairies, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Oh, actually. Does it have... That's not in full screen. Let me just see if I can fix this to get this in full screen. There we go. That's a bit better. All right. So at this point, we'd just like to get a, an I idea, sort of overview of who you guys are uh, so we know who we're talking to. So... Just raise your hand if you're a site builder. That should be almost everyone. Yep. You can all click things. Good. Uh, themers? Whoa. You're not a themer? Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Um, developers? Wow. Awesome. And DevOps? Oh, sweet. Nice. Good handful. And is there anyone who doesn't fit into any of these categories? Nice. Cool. <laughs> That's Welcome. Really of those, yeah. Hopefully you learn a few things, regardless of who you are. <laughs> and uh, we will have time uh, for questions at the end. If, um, if we're really not making sense, feel free to like wave your hands wildly and tell us that we're crazy. Um, we're, we're not proud, so <laughs> that's fine. So to start with, we're going to talk about some of the changes in the Drupal 8 theme layer. Then we're going to talk about uh, some of the practicals and show you an example. And then after that, we're going to just kind of throw in some more stuff at the end. All right. So the first thing that we're going to be going through is the, the re removal of the process layer. And so what we did is we looked at the theme system and we're looking at, OK, is this useful, is this not useful? And we uh, found that the process layer was useful for collecting all the information you got from pre-process. A lot of people actually don't even know when to use process and when to use pre-process. Um, yeah, so <laughs> we decided to kind of cut that out um, and is there a possibility for that? And we found a nice way to do that. So we've removed that. And the only real things that kind of linger on in that whole that idea of pre-process is your assets, your scripts, your styles, and um, they were they were getting aggregated from all your ad JS, uh, ads, ad, Drupal ad CSS and Drupal ad JS, 
uh, and a few other little things like that. And that's where process did all its work. Everything else was done in pre-process. So pre-process is still there, but process is gone. And we managed to let Twig deal with it. So that was kind of nice. Yeah, these, it's basically the, the process layer was flattening strings, like the, or creating strings if you prefer. Um, but in, in Drupal 8, the paradigm is more so uh, something that we're calling lazy rendering. So uh, keeping the raw data alive as long as possible and then rendering whatever output as late as possible, which in most cases now means in the Twig template. And that, that gives you that data all the way to the last second. You have access to that information, uh, whereas before it was flattened into a string and yeah. you had to deal with the string at that point. We'll show, we'll show an example of that in a bit as well. So uh, theme functions are being converted to Twig templates. Uh, they're effectively deprecated. If you are a contrib developer or a theme developer in Drupal 8 and you add a new theme function, people will yell at you uh, because we're taking them out for a reason. They're, they're just they're a pain. I haven't met anyone so far who enjoys the experience of finding where the theme function is, taking the whole thing, which might be massive in some cases, copying it into your template PHP and then changing one or two lines. A theme item list is probably the, the yeah. worst in terms of its complexity and the fact that a lot of it's just building a string in the end. Um, yeah. And the, one of the smallest ones is theme button. Uh, you might have used that one to change the input button into like an actual button type in HTML and found that it broke everything. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to talk about where markup belongs? Well, yeah. <laughs> markup really belongs in the template. You should be able to see, uh, you should be able to get, let your editor actually see these uh, these tags and, and syntax highlight these things instead of being inside of a string. If you have your markup in a string, the syntax highlight is not going to see that mistake that you forgot the ending <laughs> uh, left than or less than or greater than signs. Um, it's not going to be able to tell you, uh, like, autocomplete things for you. If you're writing markup and string, it just feels like you're doing it wrong. So we're trying to remove that and put it into the templates so that at least you have, um, you can use the tools that are meant for those types of uh, uh, files. Yeah, get, get rid of all, as many of the dot equals, dot equals, dot equals as we can. And then it also, another kind of side benefit is that you don't have to escape 10 million quotes if you or say quoting an HTML attribute. I don't know why you'd ever do that. <laughs> uh, theme suggestion hooks are something new in Drupal 8. Uh, I don't know if anyone's worked with uh, theme hook suggestions in pre-process in Drupal 7. Yeah, they're, they're, they're not super, super common, but there's, there's often use cases for this. So a theme suggestion, uh, the example that I usually use is an article node. So a node, we all know what a node is, right? So there's nodes, but then there's different types of nodes. You have your content types. So it's pretty common, and I'm sure you've done this on a site where you make a node dash dash article template, right? And those actually come, those suggestions come from this kind of thing where you're in pre-process and you're doing, you're, you're taking the variables that are coming in and you're kind of using that as contextual information to say, hey, actually, I might want to provide a slightly different template for this case, right? So there's sort of a few problems with mushing that into the idea of preparing variables. One of them is that you might just be wasting your time uh, because if you're preparing all these variables and you're saying, actually, you can go over to this completely different template, then you, a lot of the time you can waste uh, effort and it could be some, some kind of heavy operation, which. Hopefully you're not doing heavy, heavy operations in pre-process, but it does happen. Uh, so another problem too is that what we want to do, hopefully for Drupal 8, is make it so that you can have a pre-process function for that article node. Uh, so right now you would have to do my theme or my module pre-process node, and then you'd have to have an if in there. So you'd have to say, you know, if variables node type equals equals article. But it would be nice if you could just say, my theme, preprocess node, underscore, underscore article, right? If, if you know directly what you want to target. So this was the first step along that path anyway, and this got in uh, last fall around DrupalCon Prague. So there's new hooks um, that, that come before preprocess, and we'll kind of give you an overview later of 
what that process looks like. But essentially, you're, you're either returning an array. If you're, if you're the node module, you're returning an array and you're saying, here's, here's my initial set of suggestions. And if you're any other modular theme, then it's just an alter hook and you're altering an array. That's all there is to it. And we'll, we'll be able to see, if the, the concept of template suggestions is not yet clear, we'll be able to see a better example in a few minutes. Um, so now we're going to say goodbye to theme function. Um, this <laughs> I'm glad some people like that. Um, it was theme function returns a string, and this is the same problem as we had before. Uh, if you're returning a string to the template, then it's already flat and useless to anybody that's trying to theme it. So you have to go look for something higher up the chain to manipulate that information. Um, so theme is still actually in there. It's just called underscore theme, so don't touch it. <laughs> um, but we've tried to uh, get rid of it in all cases. Most of the cases that's remaining are tests, actually. Um, but uh, yeah, and so now we're actually using renderable arrays like all over the place. We would have preferred maybe some object-oriented solution for this. Maybe that's a D9 thing, but uh, for now we, we're at least consistent with how we're building uh, the out uh, building the structure that gets sent to a template. Um, so at least that part's consistent, and that's kind of kind of a nice thing to have. Uh, yeah, theme functions were always producing strings, so whenever that theme function gets called, it's sending a string. Yep, and and just to kind of touch back on that lazy rendering concept, if this if this this is a list variable, uh, so let's just pretend that this list variable is getting passed to some template. In the first case, you're getting a string. So if you need to do anything special with that, you're looking at regular expressions, x path, choose your poison, basically. Um, and in the second case, it's actually still structured data. So like I was saying earlier, and Joel was saying, you actually still have access to the raw data. So if there was some use case, in the second case, from your Twig template, you could say, hey, I want to pull out the items from this list variable, and then you could do your own completely custom markup. You don't need to necessarily use the preset item list that Drupal provides. So it's, it has many benefits. Uh, another kind of side benefit of this is that it can be a performance improvement, because if you go down to the template and you never even output list, then you're not losing anything. You're, you're not wasting time rendering this thing that is just kind of sitting there waiting and never being used. Oh yeah, and uh, Twig is in core, by the way. Um, this, this talk has evolved quite a bit. There's a lot of other people talking about Twig now, so we decided that we would talk about more of the theme system, but uh, how many people, this is probably easier, how many people haven't heard of Twig? Okay, a couple. Okay, so Twig is, this is a quote, uh, is a flexible, fast, and secure template engine for PHP. The Twig engine and the initial integration code to Drupal uh, was committed at Badcamp in November 2012. And the conversions of the TPL PHP files, or the tipple FIPS, as they're sometimes <laughs> lovingly called, <laughs> to uh, .html .twig files, which I, we haven't really come up with something for them yet. It's, I don't know, they're, they're Twig templates. Um, that was committed during DrupalCon Portland in last year, May 2013. And Twig is now the default template engine for Drupal 8. Woohoo! So, <laughs> yeah, that's basically the reason why I got involved. Uh, I couldn't imagine another release of Drupal that used PHP template and called it the templating language. So, yeah. So, uh, Twig gets us some pretty cool stuff. And not necessarily Twig, but just sort of the momentum behind it. This, this is something that we probably could have done with PHP template. But since we had all this momentum and movement, this is, we got Twig and we, we got some cool stuff like this. So in Drupal 8, uh, there's, some, there's some things kind of moving around. I, it says settings.php at the top, but uh, right now I believe it's in a file called something like example.settings.local.php somewhere in One the structure. Folder. One folder down, yeah, right it's, now. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> or you can just add this line to your settings.php. That works perfectly fine too. So anyway, twig, twig underscore debug equals true will be your new best friend in Drupal 8 theming. So once you turn that on, clear your caches, view your source, everything that's coming from a Twig template gets marked in, uh, sorry, gets wrapped in HTML comments. 
So let me see if I can kind of highlight this. So no, I can't. Eh, a little bit. Anyway, the stuff at the top here, that is the theme suggestions that I was talking about. So it goes from most specific to least specific. So the first one that it finds, it will use. And the template that's currently being used will have a little X beside it. So I don't know if anyone's tried that, tried uh, Devel Themer, but this is basically that, but it doesn't mess up your CSS and JavaScript that you're trying to do in your <laughs> theme. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, this is one of my favorite things in, in Drupal 8 because I've always, I always struggled, especially when I was first learning Drupal theming, like how, where is this coming from, right? You, want to, you know you want to change something, where is it coming from? And the great thing with this is basically how I envision things and how it works today is you basically right click something on the page, inspect it, and then it tells you where the template is. Yeah. And actually, I should point out too that it gives you the full path in the file system to where that template is. So this actually, this actually shows in your source. Yes, this shows in your source. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not something you really want to turn on for production, but <laughs> for development purposes, this is fantastic. And we'll show you a little live demo of that a little bit later. So let's talk a little bit about sandwiches. <laughs> uh, it's good that you've already eaten. The first time we gave this was like right before lunch, so <laughs> we, we don't feel as bad this time. We were hungry when we came up with the example, though. Uh, the, the code is on GitHub as well. GitHub.com slash Drupal Twig slash sandwich if you want to take a peek. It's just like a, a little example module. So uh, we're trying to give an overview of, is it the... <laughs> Sorry, I'm going too far. Sure. Yeah, sure. Sorry, I'm missing this slide. Walk you through the. the like, 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 like. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so we're going to kind of walk you through um, how you get stuff themable, so that maybe if in your, if you're doing stuff for contrib or you're trying to make something so that somebody else can extend it, um, and what Drupal does for you. Oh, jeez. Can you hear me now? Okay, I'll be really close. Um, so we're going to try to give you an example of what you'd use to uh, help provide themable output for, for contrib or f for yourselves or what actually we are doing in Drupal core to give you this information. So uh, define, uh, define is how you kind of define that you're going to be developing a, a Twig template. And you're going to define what variables are going to be put into um, that or be passed along to that uh, that theme template, and also what's the template's name? Um, in this case, it's sandwich, and the variables are like attributes, name, bread, cheese, etc. Um, and this is the kind of the rendering flow that happens. It oh, are we out of voice? Oh, sorry, that's why mine messed up. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Okay. So then the next step is we're going to be building um, the building the information, passing the information uh, into the template. So we need to build a render array. And so in this case, we have a function called build that's irrelevant. Um, and we're building a render array. So you have theme and then the, the name of that, um, that theme hook, which was sandwich. And we're going to be passing a bunch of uh, variables. And we can pass in stuff from uh, translation, translated variables or... Uh, translated strings in this case, or uh, an array of attributes, um, any type of variable that you're trying to pass to, a, any type of data that you're trying to pass to uh, a Twig template, that's where you kind of pass it in, is in through the variables of uh, the render, renderable array. That's better. Uh, and this is how you take all that information and present it inside your Twig template. So we have um, the attributes gets put up into the top, and then we have the name right after, and those curly brackets are how you do print, so that's your echo or print in, in PHP. Um, it's a lot simpler and uh, less likely that you won't make a mistake, because, well, your, your template will, or sorry, your IDE will probably syntax highlight like this kind of does. 
Um, then you have like if statements. So this uh, twig actually has if statements as well, and you can check to see if something has uh, is empty. And also has for loops as well. At the very bottom of the screen there, you'll see uh, we have the concept of for loops. There's some things in the templating language that are are there for um, convenience sake, and but there's not absolutely everything that you have in PHP. It's kind of limited to limited scope, and there's some niceties there too. And what we get out of that is a nice little um, sandwich. <laughs> it's a sandwich for or like a recipe, or not a recipe, but like a, a menu of what's inside of our sandwich, and we just kind of spit it out into a uh, template and format it the way I wanted it. <laughs> Demo time? Demo time, yeah. All right, demo time. Enough looking at screenshots. Let's do the real thing. All right, so. Uh, D8. Can't see what I'm typing. There we go. Okay, so. We got some sandwiches here, right? Cool. So. Uh, I want to show a quick demo of Twig Debug. This might take some doing, so bear with me. Live demo, good times. Okay, so. And we, we made this sandwich module really quick, also while we were hungry. Um, and just trying to show all the different var variables that you can kind of pass in through a, render, a renderable array. And then you can use those exact same variables in your template. Um, so everything so you pass through is is available through your template, and you're defining. The idea is that you're def, you're, you're defining um, what you're going to be passing to your template, so your template knows what to expect. Um, you're you're building and actually passing those variables into that template. So that's that build stage, and then the this, the last part there is getting that um, opening up your template and putting in those variables that it is supposed to expect and um, trying to deal with them either by checking to see if they exist or not empty or uh, wrapping them in, in tags that you're looking to wrap them in, essentially. That's, that's what you're getting. You so, take so the that was the, it. Sorry, that was the before. Hmm? And let's just search for sandwich in here. Did I type on that? There we go. So page dash dash sandwich. Here we go. So this is our sandwich template, right? Cool. Twig debug goodness. And uh, we can also just show you quickly uh, the code behind this module. It is on GitHub as well. So let's start with the info file. There's a lot of YAML in Drupal 8, so it's... Um, Instead, of the info file was before it was like kind of like a dot i and i thing. So a lot of things are standardized into YAML now, and some hooks and things have been replaced by YAML. So uh, it's it's a pretty good change. I think I think most people will like it. So your info file is, is fairly similar. Uh, we also have a routing file, which is similar to hook menu in Drupal 7. It does most of the same things except for creating menu items. It just does your routing. And what else do we have? We have a module file, I think. A controller? Yeah, we have a, so our module file is our, where our hook theme goes. Um, dot module files are optional in Drupal 8, so if you don't have any procedural code like this, you don't need to have one, so as more of the code is object-oriented. And then uh, you also have a controller, which is, is basically essentially like the same as a page callback in Drupal 7. That's really all this is. So in, a, in this case, it's just, it's returning this, this big render array. Okay? So that's the live demo portion. Let me see if I can get back to the slides. There we go. Okay. So, um, we're just going to give you a quick overview of the rendering flow. This is more probably more of a reference thing, just so that you know this is how things work. Um, I, I know it helped me a lot to understand things to to actually get an overview of, of when things get called and everything. So, Drupal render is the the primary thing that's going to 
spit out markup. Inside Drupal Render, you have optional pre-render callbacks, and that is working on your structured data, so normally your render arrays. So if you need to do, if there's something, it's usually something that you're kind of doing as a reusable thing. Most cases you can do in pre-process, but there's some cases where you need to do some kind of reusable pattern. That's when you might use pre-render. Uh, and then the underscore theme, which is the artist previously known as theme, is called. And then inside there, you have the new theme suggestion hooks. And then you have pre-process functions. And then you have the template actually getting rendered. So in, in our case, the Twig template. And then you're kind of back out into Drupal render. And then you have post-render callbacks. And the callbacks are just PHP callables, by the way. They can be, it can be a procedural function or it can be a method on a class. And the post-render functions operate on the string of HTML. So there's some use, use cases there for caching, for example, where you might be putting some kind of a token in there. And then in the post-render, you could replace that token with an actual value, but still keep it cached, things like that. So that's that. And then we're going to talk about some more stuff. So, Joel, do you want to talk about Twig Magic? Okay. Um, so, there's a number of ways uh, that Twig actually will try to determine what your variable is when you're trying to print it. And uh, for the first thing is you can pass the, the variable in directly. So, Sandwich has um, trees, cheese, and that's the array key, and it will print cheese. So if you do curly brackets cheese, you will be getting the value of that, um, that array key. The, the second one is a property of an object. If I pass sandwich, um, it, if it was an object, uh, sandwich was an object, uh, cheese was the property of that object, I could actually do the same thing. It goes sandwich dot cheese. Um, and the same thing is if it's a method. So whenever you're printing something, um, it Twig is actually going to be going through a list of different, trying to find what you're trying to print. And if you pass in, um, if you pass in a, an object, it'll actually look for a property, uh, a method, a getter method with the, the words get in front of it, um, and an is if you're trying to deal with Boolean. So if you do use those conventions of get or is in your method names and they're public, uh, Twig will be able to use those. So. Um, and then you can also use magic is set magic uh, magic getters. Those are uh, PHP uh, constructs that allow you to be a little bit more dynamic with what the actual key is going to be. Uh, you pass in a key, and then your object will actually determine whether or not it has that 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 key, and and then try to print its value. And you can store that anywhere. Um, so yeah, there's lots of ways that Twig will try to get at your data um, as, that you're passing through. So you have lots of options, and you can get quite creative with how um, how, how those methods uh, will work, or if you need to have a method on an object that gets passed to Twig and maybe changes depending on what parameters get passed in. What if you have it it basically this is the order that it it does it in. So the first one it finds it uses. Cool. Yeah. So the uh, the question was, what if you have multiples? By the way, for the for the recording. Um, so, and then just to add on, just to finish this part, um, if none of these are true, you'll just get a null value back. And also, by the way, uh, Twig magic is one of the coolest features of Twig, in my opinion, and it's also one of the slowest, right? Because it's doing all these checks. However, there's a PHP extension. I believe it's just called Twig, and that provides a C native version of this function. So it, in your templates that are compiled, it replaces all those with its own kind of native PHP function, and that makes it a lot faster. So if you're running, if performance is an issue, then get the uh, PHP extension set up. I don't know, I have, I have it set up on my laptop, it was pretty easy, but. And uh, attributes. Uh, so attributes are quite different in Drupal 8. Uh, there may still be some changes, but this is this is the status quo right now. So you you may have seen things like attributes array, classes array, things like that. If you're working, especially in the pre-process layer, in Drupal 8 there is a attributes object, 
which has its own storage and everything, but also knows how to print out all your different attributes. So there's a, an array of attributes, for example, classes. There's a Boolean, which would be like your checked and unchecked and that kind of thing. And then there's just string. So if you have like an ID, ID or something. So in your Twig template, all you're doing is you are printing, doing the double curly braces and doing attributes. And then under the behind the scenes, that's calling the two string method on the object to actually spit out a string. And if you need to split out the classes, you can do that as well. Uh, there's a new, we added uh, a few filters and functions to Twig. Uh, if you want to learn more about extending Twig, uh, you can come to the Twig Playground Lab tomorrow and we'll, we'll have the time and stuff for that at the end of this. But anyway, uh, if you want to split out the attributes, you do attributes.class, right? That's kind of that drillability thing. And then you do attributes pipe without class. And we won't go too much into the filters and functions. There is another Twig talk as well today that will talk more about that, but it's, it's pretty sweet. So that's pretty much it. Thank you. Um, you can yell at us on Twitter. You can go to drupaltwig.org. Uh, we hang out in IRC a lot at drupal-twig. And there's a Drupal Twig hashtag where we post hangouts and stuff. We do hangouts usually every week. Uh, I also want to mention before I forget that uh, there's a big sprint Friday. So if anyone is interested in helping us make this even better and fix some of the bugs and just in general just make it better, then please come to the sprints on Friday. We'd be really happy to have you. Uh, there is a mic kind of in the middle there in, in between rows if anyone has questions about anything at all. Or if you don't want to get up, you can, you can shout it out and I can repeat it. <laughs> sure. No, that's, that's a good question. Uh, the theme registry so far hasn't changed too much. Um, some of the logic has moved into a service. Well, it's basically just a class. But, uh, oh, sorry, thank, yeah, thank you. So the question was essentially, has anything, does this affect anything having to do with the theme registry? So to my knowledge, there's, there's minimal, if any, changes to the theme registry so far. Um, that might change, but not to my knowledge. <laughs> um, so there's an issue, it looks like Warren posted it, about extending blocks. Yeah. For blocks? For, well, not blocks? Or twig blocks? Twig blocks. Okay, so, so the question was what's the game plan for twig blocks? We originally weren't planning to use them in core, but now the actual, just to make it extra confusing, the block template has a twig block inside of it. You know, it's the, like, the exhibit thing. Um, but anyway, um, so does that help? I mean, we're, we're, I don't know if we're going to introduce any more in, in Drupal 8, but we, there'll be a lot of it in Contrib, I think, because it's one of the most amazing features. We haven't, we haven't used them in core uh, too often, but what it will actually provide is uh, we, we try to make it, we try to at least use one, and so that one actually added an extra feature that allows you to extend, uh, extend existing blocks um, or existing templates in, in, in Drupal system with some little um, helpers for the namespacing. And um, it should help you be able to extend your own templates. Uh, so if you copy your page TPL or your node TPL in, in your theme, you should be able to extend an existing one for your articles node, and you don't have to copy and paste um, all of the HTML that's surrounding the stuff that you're changing. And that's the big benefit of that. Uh, yeah, and I'm positive there will be more of that in the... Uh Actually, I'll go to this slide and so you guys don't miss this. And by the way, if you go to the session node for this session on the DrupalCon Austin site, we have a link to the slide deck at the very bottom. There's a link that just says slide deck. Um, if you don't want to dig these up, but these are all. So there's Twig, Friendly Curly Braces and Major Templates, uh, Ryan Weaver today at 5. And then there's two talks tomorrow that are pretty heavily related to this stuff. Uh, C4RL, Carl Wiedemann is giving one on uh, object-oriented render API, and then me, Joel, and Morton are doing a Twig Playground Lab, 
where we're going to be showing off a lot of cool things. I think the time is actually not correct for the Twig Playground because it's definitely longer than an hour. Um, and also the obligatory evaluate our session, please. Let us know how we did. Did you get what you expected to get out of this? Is there anything you wish we would have talked about, et cetera, et cetera? And yeah, I just wanted to get that in there before everyone leaves. Any other questions? It, uh, right now, it's uh, it's actually still hasn't been converted. It's still using a theme function. Um, but there's two two approaches. One of them is the straight conversion issue um, to get it just into Twig as is, and the other one is looks really promising is a recursive um, macro that looks awesome uh, because it allows you to have all the all the template information in one one template file. Um, so there's two of them. Maybe you can go in there and flag which one's your favorite. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, so the question was what's uh, what's happening with the menu system and its rendering with Twig, correct? Yeah, more or less. Any other questions? Yeah? Uh, every time we add a new field and a new content type, uh, do we need to define that every time in Twig or does the auto generate kind of like it does now? Okay, so the question was if you add a new field to a content type, do you then need to go into your Twig template and add it to your Twig template? So the short answer is no, because it's similar to Drupal 7 that you have, in your node at least, you have, uh, I believe it's just the content variable. Um, and so if you print it, if you do double curly braces content, that will print out all your fields. And that without filter that we showed earlier can be used on render arrays as well. So if you, that replaces actually the show and hide, which I don't know about you guys, but I've always found that really confusing. Yes. Yeah. So it's, it reads a lot more like English now and you don't have to remember, oh, what's shown, what's hidden. And so it's, it's basically now it's, you know, if you wanted to print out your links underneath your content, or if you even want to print out your links twice, you can do that really easily now. New content.links, and then con content without links, and then content.links again if you want to. So the other part of that is also Twig templates are not PHP, but they can be parsed. So there's been some discussions. There might be a really cool contrib module that would actually basically mirror the field, field UI with your Twig templates. So that if you have in your Twig template, if you pulled out fields, the UI could actually know about that and at least reflect the, right, the correct order. And potentially, you could drag a field and your Twig template would get updated. Anything is possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty exciting. Yeah. At the back there. Oh, you got the mic. Nice. Yeah. So I just had a quick thing. We um, Back a few projects ago, we switched and started using uh, Display Suite a lot to reduce the volume of kind of unnecessary templates to uh, for cleaning out the various field.tpl files and things like that. Sure. Uh, it would seem that with this with the switch to Twig, all those are now going to have to be totally re-engineered. Um, and I haven't seen a roadmap for that. What, as far as reducing redundant templates, what does Twig do differently that the TPLs couldn't handle? Well, I do know that Display Suite is coming to Drupal 8. Um, Aspilicious. Um, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing his name, but he is, he's been working really hard on porting and has actually found some core bugs and stuff in the process. So as far as I know, you'll basically have the display suite you know and love in Drupal 8. Yeah. Anything else? All right, well, uh, thanks for coming. And uh, if you're interested in hearing more, Twig Playground. <laughs> <laughs>